First uh, item tonight is uh, adoption of our agenda. Are there any edits or changes requested by commissioners? Hearing none, uh, we will adopt the agenda as presented. No, I, wait, maybe I should also ask for any public comment on uh, edits in our agenda. Yeah, you don't need to, but you're welcome to. Okay, I don't need to, then I won't. Our item number two is public comment on non-agenda items. Do I have any public comment? Yeah, one second. Stephen. You hear me? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm not able to speak to the agenda. Uh, I, uh, but uh, I guess, Eric, uh, I, I would, I'd be interested in that rule. Um, anyhow, the reason, uh, what I wanted to say today is uh, something similar uh, that I said uh, to the board meeting at the board meeting, and that is, you know, um, imagine if you were going to sell your home today and you wanted to get the best price for it. What would you do? Uh, obviously, the first thing you do is you'd fix up, uh, you know, all the little things that have been bro broken. You you get a fresh coat coat of paint. Maybe you plant some new flowers. In, uh, in other words, you would really make sure that the uh, maintenance was tip-top and presentable. Um, likewise, um, so I'd like to, you to think about how you can add value to your personal wealth by um, making the uh, Marinwood CSD parks and open space the very best it can be. Um, uh, you know, we live now in a valley where virtually every home is close to a million dollars. And with that um, type of investment, people have certain expectations. And um, I ask you, you know, how can we, this is, 19, this is not 1950 all over again. It's not 1960s, 70s, or the 80s. This is... Uh, today and we've got um, big opportunities for growth. So what is the big vision propelling you to improve um, the parks and open space? I'd like to suggest that we could do a much better job in maintenance. We could build better trails, better accessibility, and um, think of more artistic expressions in the community so we don't look like just every other place uh, in you know California gets some sort of landmark type of uh, 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 features that we could kind of identify with as a community so that's pretty much all I'd like to say you're the visioneers and uh, hopefully uh, Eric and Luke are the doers that uh, actualize the vision. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other public, public comment? comment? No. Okay, then we will uh, move on to item number three. These are the draft minutes of the August 24th, 2021 Park and Recreation Commission meeting. We are looking for uh, approval of these minutes. Uh, comments from commissioners? I have no comment. Um, hearing none, I would then ask for a motion to approve the minutes as uh, presented. Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Okay, so we have a motion from Campo, a second from Fine. Uh, all in favor? Aye. We uh, motion carries unanimously. Again, maybe I need to back up and ask for uh, public comment on our 
minutes. You do. You do. Thank you, John. One second. Stephen. So uh, this is a quick comment. Um, I believe with these reports that you have, it, uh, can you hear me? Okay. I, you, I started talking before the, the clock started ticking. <coughs> can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. So um, with the type of reporting that gets done on this meeting and other meetings, your comments aren't really um, uh, uh, being uh, adequately representative uh, to the board. Um, and last month was this this report last month was such an example where we were had a uh, discussion on the playground structures and Eric chose to provide a very uh, limited uh, report on the discussion and basically said you know we discuss these options this is what we decided and that was it and that really wasn't what happened we had a uh, discussion on types of structures I had brought up the point about having a uh, splash pad uh, to improve our our uh, uh, what we, the the, uh, the playground structures uh, I had also mentioned um, additional structures that we could have and you know I, I think um, if you if your voice counts for anything um, and I'm referring to your voice and of course my voice as well they it really needs to be adequately represented and um, I think that each one of you needs to demand a little bit more from uh, our managers in providing greater detail in discussions as well as reporting on their activities. I mean, it's fine, we'll, we'll look later where we find that the uh, maintenance department picks up trash, but that's really not uh, something that's worthy of a report. Um, you need more information, otherwise you're just rubber stamping whatever they do. So uh, make your voice heard, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, that being said, I would then maybe uh, ask for approval, a motion to approve again. Can I get that again from you, John? Yeah, uh, motion to approve. And Ian will second it. Second. And then uh, all in favor? Aye. Right. Again, unanimously. And now we'll move on to Item number four, this is the draft minutes of the September 14th, 2021 board meeting. This is for our review. Uh, open it up to commissioners for any comments. I guess I would just note that it looks like there might have been a brief discussion of the last and fire stuff. I, I, uh, I guess I, I would just, as a resident, uh, as well as Park and Rec Commission member, uh, want to express thanks and gratitude to the first responders there. But I don't know where else to do it, so I'll just note it here because it was um, seems like it may have come up at the board meeting. Yeah, Ian, if I could follow up on that if you don't mind john um, no. there was a brief discussion about it um the fire chief chief white uh was actually out he went out on a personal leave uh just days before that fire happened uh, and he literally just returned to work this week so he didn't uh he gave his report prior to going out on leave so the acting chief came in and spoke to the incident I anticipate uh, for the next couple of meetings, the fire commission, as well as the board, the chief will have more of a written summary included in his report for it. But uh, like I said, he was out on a, uh, on a personal medical leave and he just got back to work on Monday. Uh, so there just wasn't a lot of opportunity for that between the time of the fire and the board meeting and having an acting chief in place. 
Yes, I think we were all very grateful. I will pass that on. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear it. Right. Uh, in, in reviewing that last meeting, you guys, uh, the board spoke quite a bit about this uh, possible new trail for the uh, development there on Maroonwood Avenue. That seems like a, a, a difficult process, I think, to make something like that happen. Yeah, we can speak to that briefly. Um, and I would also uh, ask and encourage if uh, John Campo or Luke had anything to add. Um, right now, the reason this came so quickly onto a board agenda, this is something we've been talking about for a while, and then the developer made a, uh, a good faith offer um, uh, in, in lieu of building the trail because we did go out, we did do a preliminary walk. This is going to be a, a challenging trail. It does have some uh, uh, potential long-term maintenance concerns um, at the end of the topic. Uh, and Lisa, please, if there's anything I'm missing here from the board, um, the board directed staff to, you know, continue to pursue a potential uh, feasibility study, you know, like an initial feasibility study for putting in this trail. I've reached out to a couple of different uh, people who are experienced and skilled in this work. I've given them some additional material and they're, I'm still awaiting response on their availability and ability to create such a study that would basically just kind of uh, outline some of the challenges and ideally maybe even a rough potential estimate of cost uh, to building such a trail. Um, so until I get that back, we're just kind of holding steady on this to see what such a report would say. I don't know, John. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just chime in. Um, I did walk the trail or the location where the trail would go. Um, it's, you know, on one hand, it's really exciting to think about because it would be a really amazing connection and facility for the community. It would connect pretty much to the existing panhandle and then go all the way to Marinwood Market. And so before I, I walked it, I was super excited about it. Um, but then when I walked it, I was just like, man, it is not easy. There's nothing easy about it. It's right along steep eroding banks. Um, uh, there's at least one bridge that would be needed, maybe a second. Um, and, you know, I was initially brought out there that it, it wouldn't need any grading it, and uh, wouldn't need any structures, but it would need a lot of structures and, and grading and bridges and retaining walls, um, guardrails. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, if, if kids were to go out there and, cut a trail with some shovels and McLeods. Yeah, sure, they could do that, right? But it's, it's not up to a municipal standard. If we are to do it, we have to do everything to, to a standard that is safe and that we're saying, yes, this is okay for the public to use and you're not gonna fall off a cliff. Um, it's, I, I fear that it would be cost prohibitive. Um, I'm curious what some of the cost estimates come back at. I mean, it's, we did not discuss a budget, but I, I, because I plan trail projects, they, they can be quite costly. And just the planning alone, um, the environmental review, the cultural review, vegetative studies, wildlife studies. I mean, you have to do all of those things. It's not, we're not, building trails in the, you know, 50 years ago where you didn't have to do any of that planning. You, by law, you have to do it. Um, there would be regulatory permitting. None of that would be cheap. So as exciting as I was, you know, as it is, it's also a bit daunting. It's not a straightforward project. Thanks, John. Ian, anything to add? Uh, if there's nothing else from board or commission or staff, then I would ask for uh, any public comment on the uh, draft minutes of the board meeting. Now, one second, please, John.
Hello. Hello. Yeah, so uh, another example of where you really did not get a full flavor of the discussion. Um, what you got was uh, Eric's uh, opinion on the project, which clearly he's not interested in doing. Um, uh, I'm very interested in speaking more with John Campo. I built trails in Marinwood. I built trails in New Hampshire, Vermont, um, Massachusetts uh, for the Audubon Society, for basically the East Coast uh, Sierra Club and uh, Appalachian Mountain Club. Although, you know, we never had uh, environmental reviews, you know, basically, yes, we we did it with McLeods and um, no, they were not structures like um, John Campos used to be building with uh, with uh, big equipment and that sort of thing. Um, I made the recommendation that we should simply do the best we can there with the budget that we have and uh, maybe not even announce it as a uh, as a uh, uh, municipal trail but uh, you know a lot of people build trails and they'll build them for free even um, I don't want an unsafe trail I don't want a trail that's gonna uh, harm our uh, open space but I do want a trail because I, I firmly believe in the value of outdoor recreation as it um, educates people to the value of nature around us and it also enhances our quality of life. I believe that if we thought of ourselves as the place with all the great outdoors, if we, we basically um, had that as an objective, I think we would greatly enhance um, uh, our, uh, what people think of Marinwood, um, uh, you know, not as just basically a, a bedroom community, but something special for families and people who enjoy the outdoors. Um, I'm sure John can spend a lot of money, and I, I don't mean that as an insult, but I, I understand that he's working for the county and our objectives and our budgets are obviously going to be different a lot less, but it doesn't mean that we can't do something positive for the community. We shouldn't give up and certainly we shouldn't leave it to somebody who's never built the trail to say, oh no, that's just going to be too much work. Let's, let's lead with vision. Let's, let's be leaders here for our community. We are stewards of Marin Wood CSD. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comments on the draft minutes? Okay, then we'll move on to item number five. This is the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Uh, we will turn to Mr. Luke Bretwell. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, well, this, uh, this past month for the recreation department, we have been um, basically making the transition from the end of our summer season to the start of our fall season of programming and um, trying to get or getting all of our um, uh, big programs off the ground, including our preschool program and our after school program, which are two of our uh, programs that run the full school year. Um, and those have been going um, really well uh, this last few weeks, and um, we're really excited. We have some new teachers in the preschool program uh, that have been um, working out great so far, and um, some new staff in the after-school program, which is, has all been going very smoothly. So we're um, very encouraged by the, the first um, month of, of programming in, in that regard, and um, these are two really important programs for our um, community center. They both feed um, a lot of our other programs throughout the year and um, uh, and they're, um, yeah, so far um, everything's been going very smoothly. Staffing's always a, a challenge during the school year, um, especially when, when we hire a lot of um, part-time staff for both those programs. We don't have a full-time preschool. We don't have a full-time uh, aftercare or a child care program. So um, we have uh, employees that come from, you know, they are either going to school or they're working other jobs or they're going to college and other things. So um, it's always a little bit of a challenge to find 
a uh, great qualified staff, but um, we always seem to, to figure it out. And this year we do have a really, really good crew um, working for us in the after school program. And um, so we're excited about that. A lot of our staff members do come from our summer program or end up working in the next year's summer program. And there's a lot of uh, crossover there. And so uh, it's great to, to um, have some known entities there. Um, we also have a lot of our other recreation classes have started and some other ones are coming up soon. Um, we're, it's a challenging time right now where um, a lot of COVID restrictions have been um, pulled back, but there are still a lot in place. And even without some of the restrictions on what we're allowed to do, um, the sentiment uh, is still that people are a little bit cautious on what they're going to sign their kids up for. And a lot of adults are being cautious about what programs they're wanting to um, go do indoors with, with other people. So um, it's a, it's been interesting f trying to figure out that balance. And so some of our programs like the Zumba program, which is um, uh, one of our bigger adult programs that typically takes place indoors. Um, the, our instructor was feeling a little bit uh, wary of, of doing that just now with, with the numbers and with things and wasn't feeling quite ready for that. And some of the students weren't feeling quite ready for that. So um, thankfully they were able to figure out a way to do that uh, out in the park um, in the meantime. And um, that's been going really well. And we're gonna be limited by daylight pretty soon, but um, I think we'll be able to transition back indoors pretty soon, but it's been nice to find an alternative for that. And um, we're seeing a lot of our programs uh, thriving outdoors, a lot of um, uh, sports uh, programs, golf um, and different things have been able to take place in the park, which has been great. Uh, out in the open air, which is less of a risk. And, um, and some of the programs have been happening indoors and, and the kids are wearing masks, the staff are wearing masks, and um, it seems like that all going very well. So um, no major health concerns or um, uh, COVID concerns so far. And so we're just trying to be as careful as possible and run as many things as we're able to do. So things represent a pretty normal fall right now um, with maybe a fewer, fewer adult classes than we would normally have. Um, but we're gonna to continue to, to work on um, seeing what we can do and, and be creative. So staff have been working hard and working with our instructors to um, just see what, all, what, what opportunities there are to, to provide recreation for the community. And, um, uh, and so far, I think um, we're able to do a lot. We put out a, a physical version of our catalog of classes. We mailed it out and we did it, we committed. Um, a lot of other, almost all the other recreation departments in the area um, did not. And they, it's all digital and, and being a little bit uh, worried about what's going to get canceled and, and what's going to happen or not. But um, we felt really good about our, our lineup for this fall and we went ahead and, and put it out there and we've um, had really good enrollment with uh, most of our programs. And, um, and I want to thank Carolyn. I thanked her in the, the last uh, board meeting, but just for putting out a really quality uh, catalog all done in house um, that that is um, really represents what we're doing and, and what we're trying to accomplish with recreation uh, very well. So um, uh, that's all been going really smoothly this first month into the fall season. Um, the pool is in its uh, final two weeks of the of our our fall pool season or our our 2021 pool season, um, and we're we're currently offering lap swim, recreation swim, private and semi private swim lessons. Uh, and uh, a water polo program, and things are going really well. The, the pool's been busy. Um, I've heard through the grapevine from a lot of our swimmers coming through that a lot of the other pools in the area are, um, have severely limited their hours and their access and are still requiring reservations and are closing multiple days a week um, and are having trouble staffing things. So um, I'm very proud of, of our staff to be able to have the pool open every day and to be able to offer these programs um, along the normal schedule that, that we would in a normal year. Um, and we've been able to accommodate the, the demand uh, very easily. So I'm glad to be a pool that is able to be open and is able to provide um, aquatic recreation to the community when a lot of other places um, haven't been able to do that this fall. So that's been um, a great thing we've been able to do. And I thank John Paul for um, having a good staff and, and keeping things running so smoothly down at the pool. We do close for the season on October 8th which is a week from Friday. And um, so we're just finishing out the, the end of the season here and um, it's been going great. We have a couple of events planned, just, just two for now. We'll, we'll also be adding an event uh, around our normal winter time, winter fest event, which we'll announce later. But the Halloween Harvest Fest will take place a week from Friday on October 8th. Um, 
it's a little bit scaled back from our normal open house event. We're going to do an all outdoors Halloween event this year, um, just being um, uh, cognizant of the, of the different health risks and what people are wanting to do. We're going to do a walk through trick or treat event in the park. And um, so we're trying to avoid a lot of congregating and, and people being stuck together inside. It'll be um, kind of keeping people separated and then go station to station and, and kids will get to trick or treat for, for candy and prizes and things. And there'll be a pumpkin patch at the end and people will be able to pick up a pumpkin and some decorations to take home with them. So it'll be a skilled, skilled down from a normal Hall our normal Halloween bash, but um, it's, I think the staff have a really good event planned and we're really excited about it. So that's a week from Friday. Uh, mark your calendars five to six thirty um, here in the park, and then after that in November we'll have um, our annual fall art show will be taking place, and uh, um, our art director Susan Press was once again uh, putting on the show, and um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of amazing artwork on display again this year. So that's on November sixth from three to seven, and that will be in the community center. Um, so uh, a lot of stuff going on with recreation and we continue to monitor things and, and keep planning for um, we'll be announcing what's coming up in the winter and what's coming up um, for next spring as we figure all that out. But um, the fall is off to a great start and uh, we're excited about that. On the um, parks maintenance side of things, uh, we've been uh, had some tree work done recently. There were um, some trees in the panhandle and along the walking path to Quietwood. Uh, from the panhandle um, that were determined to have uh, sudden oak death that were removed um, a little over a, a couple weeks ago, uh, which we got taken care of, thankfully, before any limbs dropped or any trees fell over. Um, we've the, the staff has been working on rehabilitating the turf after uh, the summer, so we've got half the park is blocked off right now. We're trying to give the turf a really good chance to do germinate and things to really get established before we uh, let a bunch of foot traffic back on it. So um, I think it'll be a few more weeks that we'll, we'll let that take hold and then we will open up that side of the park and we'll shift over to the, to the site closest to the community center and do a similar treatment there. Um, but the, the turf seems to be coming in well. Um, and in the meantime, we've had a couple irrigation repairs that the staff have been working on in the, in the main part of the park um, that uh, have been going um, smooth enough. Um, and the tennis courts, uh, courts one and two, which are the ones closest to Miller Creek um, in the park, uh, just got uh, a new top coat treatment. Um, they, so we had the cracks were filled and, um, and reinforced, and then a new uh, coating was put on the top. Um, this isn't a full resurfacing. Um, this is a temporary uh, improvement. We hope to get a few years out of this uh, treatment. We've been um, kind of rotating with the different tennis courts to, to just keep them playable. Um, eventually, we are going to need to, to do a full resurfacing. So uh, we'll be looking at when we'll be able to, to put that on the schedule. But for now, the, the courts um, were completed uh, on September 22nd. I guess that was last Wednesday. And they, they look fantastic. And we just hope that um, they continue to look good for, for a while. A lot of things contribute to the cracks and the divots and the things in the courts. Um, the weather has a big impact uh, and just the underlying um, uh, foundation and, and the, the, the tree roots, the gopher holes, um, moisture and all of that. But um, for right now, the, the courts are um, looking really good and we hope we can keep them playable for, for a long time. Uh, the... Creekside Court out at Creekside Park is currently getting a similar treatment. Um, that court is in, is in pretty bad shape, but um, we hope to, to get that uh, after this treatment. We hope to be able to um, keep playing on that for a while, but um, that court is getting to the end of its uh, use, usable life, and we will need to resurface at some point in the not too distant future. But um, the treatment we're doing right now should buy us another few years on that court as well. So, um, uh, I guess at this point, I would like to turn over to the commission if um, anyone uh, has any comments or questions. Thank you. Commissioners? Well, Luca, in the pool, you, you're giving water polo lessons, is that? Do I understand oh. that correctly? Uh, this is a program run by uh, Chris Case, um, who uh, is uh, running a, it's, it's a water polo recreation program, um, I think is geared towards middle school age 
uh, kids and it's sort of an introduction to anyone that's interested in potentially playing water polo on a high school water polo team when they when they get into high school um, sort of giving them a head start in learning a lot of the basics and coming in not um, super green but having a little bit of a foundation so that they can uh, better adapt to to playing at the high school level when they get when they get there so it's a recreational program it's two days a week after the pool closes in the evening um, and uh, we're offering this um, for the last several years um, in the in the spring and or fall so so, so no, no room for a 69 year old left-handed winger. Um, I, I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask the coach. <laughs> and then the, the, uh, art show, will that be virtual as well? No, the art show is planned to be, um, an in-person event. Um, we were on the fence about that in terms of, um, you know, whether we should be holding an indoor, uh, event like that at this time. And we deemed that um, the art show being a, a, an open house that uh, never really, it, it's not everyone showing up at one time. It's sort of a few people at a time over the course of several hours. Um, we, we deemed that we could go ahead and, um, and hold it uh, in the traditional style. Everyone that shows up will be asked to, to wear a mask while they're inside for that show. And um, we are um, just, uh, planning for it to, to not be too crowded and, and not to be a big congregation. Um, the artists typically uh, hang out the whole time, but, but this year we'll, we will, um, we're going to have them uh, inter, you know, coming intermittently and not, not being a big group. So um, based on the way the show has run in, in past years, um, it seems like it's something that would, would not be a, a big issue or safety concern in the current conditions. So that's the plan. All right, thanks for clarifying that. Do you have yeah. any other details on the maintenance facility? Um, I, uh, I probably could speak to this in more detail than I can. I know that the um, the slab was was poured uh, was that last last Wednesday, Eric? Uh, not the slab, the uh, the you said the slab last uh, last Wednesday. No, you got it right. It's the slab. Yeah, the yeah. all of the foundation, the flooring, uh, the slab, all of that was poured. So now they're framing. Uh, and they're still moving along right on schedule. Yeah, I'll tell you the cement pour was an impressive operation to watch too. I mean, just the equipment that they brought out with the boom trucks and the uh, and the reach to be able to get out there. And you know, it's a lot of cement, so it's it looks really good. It's coming right along. Had a regular weekly meeting this morning, and uh, like I said, they've already started framing, so the wall should be coming up quickly, and uh, they're moving along. All right. Thank you. Yep. Anything else from the commission? I'd ask for uh, public comment on uh, recreation and uh, park maintenance activity report. Yeah, one second, John. Steven? Yeah, hi. Um, so a number of things. Uh, first of all, with regards to landscape uh, the irrigation system you know every year after the uh, car show we have a bunch of uh, uh, irrigation breaks I don't know when we put in the uh, replacement irrigation whether we can protect these pipes a little bit more but um, I think we need to acknowledge the source of all these breaks um, you know uh, a number of things. Also, uh, I sent uh, Eric, I sent a few of you, I don't think I sent any of the park commissions, um, some pictures of some play structures. Um, you know, if Eric hasn't forwarded to, uh, them to you, you might want to ask why. Um, these are good, affordable um, structures that have a lot of neat features that uh, appear to be along the lines of what you guys had uh, indicated you're interested in um, and you know how does it serve anybody's interest by um, you know limiting the information that you have to make your decisions um, I, I want to bring up an issue and I don't know if this is the right time to do it um, I was walking through the park at 530 on Sunday and um, I happened to observe uh, uh, a very, very large party um, 
with uh, uh, three large tents, uh, about a hundred or more people, um, a stage uh, that hadn't been erected, and um, there was an announcer kind of emceeing the whole event. It was in Spanish, so I didn't really know what he was saying, but it hap I, I was wondering, I'm sure they left a mess after they left uh, Monday, but you know, I'm wondering, uh, are we actually uh, do we have security or are people present to address this and make sure that uh, they're abiding by our rules in the park? Um, we do not allow alcohol in the park, even though that gets violated all the time. And a second huge party at the Horseshoe Pits every Friday night, you can see it, we had a, a three-kegger. Um, uh, not too long ago, and no bathrooms, uh, no no porta potties were there, and it's kind of gross. This is not what you do in a million dollar uh, 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 community with million dollar homes. We got to do a lot better. So, um, I I think one of the things that this this uh, commission needs to look at is how do we get uh, better uh, enforcement of our rules. Um, uh, it seems to not be a problem uh, with the county, and uh, I think uh, it, it, this is something that you really need to confront uh, before it really totally gets out of hand. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Luke or Eric, can, can either of you provide any context to that? Um, Eric, I can take part of that, I guess, you know, chime in if you want. Um, as far as the rentals in the park, uh, we do have uh, private, we do rent out a couple of the picnic areas in the main park um, for private parties. There is a um, limit on attendance uh, and there is no alcohol allowed. There are not amplified music and um, announcements and et cetera are not allowed. And there are a set of rules that the renters do agree to. So um, as far as the enforcement of those rules and regulations, we do not have, um, uh, you know, an enforcement arm uh, that's, that's around after hours or on weekends uh, um, per se that, that goes and checks on these parties um, throughout, you know, throughout the evenings. Um, if there's someone breaking the law, we do hope that the people would, uh, would, you know, call the sheriff if there's something happening that, that shouldn't be happening or to alert um, our staff. But um, we don't have a, a regular patrol that goes on in the park uh, after hours or out of, outside of business hours. Um, so, you know, that's the first I'd heard of, of uh, the, you know, 100 plus person party in the park. They, um, I believe, did clean up very well because um, when our staff showed up uh, to, to clean up on Monday, there, there wasn't an unusual amount of trash to deal with. Um, but again, we do we do don't have um, uh, weekend park uh, staff that patrol the park regularly. Eric, you yeah, uh, I, the only thing I would add is we do have a formal agreement with the uh, with the uh, sheriff's office to you know patrol and enforce on our properties. They have copies of our ordinances, uh, and they're certainly authorized to. Uh, enforce any of the codes in there um you know to luke's point if there's you know some illegal activity going on or concerning activity uh, they would be the proper authorities to call first in such a situation did we receive complaints about such events uh no. we did not no thank you Any other comments? Okay, thank you. That would uh, move us to item number six. These are uh, any items of interest from commissioners for uh, future agenda items. Well, I, I know not, Anne's not here, um, and Ian, I wasn't sure if, if you were going to be talking about the um, playground survey, or is that Anne, or kind of curious when that's going to come back on the agenda. Yeah, I mean, I looked at 
Eric and Luke on that. I think that survey is ready to be sent out, I think. Um, but maybe on the maybe we could aim for recirculating it on the for the, the next agenda. Does that sound yeah? Good deal. Yeah, Eric? we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's easy. Um we were, you know, like I said, I'm still kind of in the application phase and putting that together. So I just first step on this whole thing is to get the formal application sent in and uh, good to go from the um, Office of Grant and Local Services, the uh, state. So from there, then we'll have a, a formal actual official project to be able to move forward with. And so that was why just holding back on that and trying to keep it in line with the timing needed uh, from the grant requirements. But I think bringing, uh, you know, kind of that survey back just for one last shot and then uh, most likely looking at, you know, probably early next year is a good time to be able to push that out um, because then we'd also be kind of working on a, a design and build RFP and that would give us some uh, uh, something to work with that, you know, my one fear and I certainly have a background in doing a lot of mass research and uh, public research and things like this uh, is, you know, you put something out there, you know, so early by the time you get around to actually doing the project, uh, a, people have kind of forgotten about it, or B, you know, attitudes or opinions have changed. So I just wanted to get it in a little bit closer with the timing to when we're actually going to be able to look at some proposals based on those results. Eric, when did you say we would look at the proposals? Uh, that won't, proposals won't be till late spring. Right. Okay. It, it seems like we'd want to give ourselves a little bit of time for back and forth with the community on the survey and just engagement. Yeah, I think we still have a lot of time for that. Yeah, yeah. Anything else from the commission? Then I would ask for a uh, public comment on future agenda items. Yeah, one second. So I think one of the future agenda items is, is uh, um, how you interact with the public. That last uh, interchange uh, was just kind of pathetic. I had uh, outlined a number of things and uh, Luke addressed it by saying basically it didn't happen and it's not a problem and we have no plans to to fix things um, that that is on weekends um, I think it's a small matter uh, to make sure uh, that we have safety in our park we're not talking about hiring policemen what we're talking about is hiring uh, basically an attendant like we do inside the rec center um, just to look after things because all the events are going on outside. It doesn't have to be a full day, but all they need to do is have a phone where they can call up the sheriff and, and also, um, be, but before they do that, they can um, talk to people who may not be following the rules and ask that they obey the rules. Uh, the other issue, I think, um, it's kind of gross, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, John, you, you said, are there any complaints? Well, you heard me give a complaint and you just basically said there's no public complaints. It's like, okay, do I not count for anything? You're not really reaching out. And I think you have, all of you really have this idea that you're some magical people that you don't have a responsibility to anyone but yourselves but you do you have uh, you have the public to to be concerned with you need to to find out what people are thinking do you really think that you know when you've got three kegs with um, 40 middle-aged guys um, and they're peeing in the bushes and they're getting drunk off uh, off their asses basically um, do you think that other people don't notice that? I mean, um, this is a, actually a real problem. And unfortunately, a, a couple of our uh, uh, commission uh, members, uh, not commission members, our, our uh, 
uh, we have a couple people that were in attendance at that party, and quite frankly, I would have expected them to be the adults. But we need better health standards, for God's sakes. We shouldn't be having beer parties and no, no bathrooms, because what happens is that whole ravine gets filled with you know what, and um, it's gross. Uh, so I'd like you to, to address that issue in the future. Uh, lastly, since we've cut down the tree on the quiet wood path, it's a great time to build a retaining wall and a small ramp so people in wheelchairs can access that uh, entrance. If you don't want to do that, for God's sakes, why are you representing our community? You finished? I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Obviously, I'm pissed. You guys don't really have conversations. So uh, I obviously I would like uh, a respectful conversation. But you know, this is unfortunately uh, what we're left with. Um, if you want to respond to me, I'll, I'll be happy to have a conversation either now or offline. Any comments from commissioners? Well, yeah, I would like to comment on that. Like Luke in, or Eric, in regards to the horseshoe pit, you know, I've, I've seen the activity over there. Um, there's porta toilets near the tennis courts. And so what, in regards to the complaints about people urinating, like what, what do you see? What do, what do you see? is the issue there. Um, in terms of the complaints received, the complaints received from, from that worthy is the one you heard tonight, and that's, that's the first time hearing of a complaint about that event, so I'm hearing it at the same time you are. But, um, right, but if, like, assume, I mean, I've seen groups of people congregate there, big groups drinking, they got to relieve themselves somewhere. Do they walk around to the tennis court, port toilet? Um, I mean, I would hope that they would. Um, I'm sure that some don't. Uh, but as far as that, you know, that's not something that um, uh, has been formally addressed in terms of, um, you know, we, we haven't discussed whether there needs to be a, a additional restroom, you know, added uh, in that part of the park. Um, if that's a need that needs to be accustomed, this would be this would be something we definitely discuss. Um, but it, 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 this is the first that this has come up to my knowledge in um, in any setting like this. I'm sorry. What, what was that? Uh, if if you're if I'm on uh, if you're listening, I I said you're full of it. Um, I you know do you really need uh, to investigate? Uh, uh, people's opinions, whether or not they approve of people peeing in public um, right along the path, because that's what we're dealing with. You know, uh, my wife, the number of women, uh, I know a lot of people that avoid that area because of that. You cannot walk past that and not notice it. And uh, I don't like the drinking there because it, they're, they're drinking too much. I don't, it, we, we have rules against that. But at the very least, we should be able to ha ha give them uh, something to urinate and not do it in public and not do it in our park. I, this is, I mean, I'm surprised that this is e even a discussion. Why, why haven't you addressed this before, before now? To say that it's, you, this is the first time you heard it or you, it's the first time you, you, you thought it was a, problem I mean come on I that just doesn't pass a sniff test I I don't have anything more to say to you Luke I mean you're you're gonna you're gonna say whatever you're gonna say I I I expect a little bit more professionalism from our managers and I don't feel that we get that sorry that's all I have to say tonight you can close the meeting and whatever your opinion is of me I don't care you know, we have a community that together, hopefully, we, we craft a, a better future for.
Um, I would just follow up with that just to say that um, this would be something that we'd be totally open to, to discussing and, you know, as, a, as an item uh, that, to, to address um, building, whether it's building a bathroom, adding a porta potty or something. Um, I think staff would be open to, you know, um, having this discussion. But as to as so far, I don't believe this has ever been uh, discussed um, in any real fashion at this meeting. I don't know, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe we've had any discussion about this before. No. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Go ahead. I, I, in my opinion, this is just something that you as staff can address and, and resolve how, in whatever you, you know, in whatever direction you think is appropriate. I don't know if it needs to be a, an item of discussion for the commission. So I, I would at first recommend that as staff you look at it and see, see what you need to do to resolve the issues and if it needs to then come to the commission for something then we're, we're happy to talk about it. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I would agree with that assessment. I mean, it seems like, um, well, you would know better than I would. I, I'm not there as much, but if, I mean, we have a port toilet fairly close, but if it's not close enough, you know, that's, it's worth exploring. I mean, obviously there's a cost there too and maintenance. So do we, and do we want another kind of semi-permanent port toilet I don't know. I mean, but I, I agree with what John Toon said. If, if it's something that we want to discuss as a commission, I'm certainly open to it. I think it's something we can discuss internally and, uh, uh, see if it's something to your guys's point that warrants coming back at a commission level. Good job. Sounds good. Anything else? Then I would move to uh, item number seven and uh, seek a motion to adjourn. Move. So move. A second. Motion from Ian, uh, second from Mr. Campo. All in favor? Thank you all and good night. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Thank you. Oops.